Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for another episode of Antonio's Movie Reviews. Today we have Best of the Best, a 1989 action film starring James Earl Jones, Eric Roberts, and Philip Reed. I absolutely love this movie, it hits hard like Rocky in a way where there is a lot of character building going on and that culminates into a super exciting climax in my opinion where despair and defeat are overcome in a major way. The movie is ripped on by many of the critics I've researched regarding this film. Mostly people called it cliche in a lot of ways, for instance, the bar brawl, but it's still another favorite of mine. Get on! It's hardly a serious martial arts film as far as fighting is concerned. A few of the guys are hardly believable as martial artists, for instance, like the mean-spirited Texan Travis Brickley, played by Chris Penn, rest in peace. Eric Roberts plays Alex Grady in a very good role by him, in my opinion. He's very sensitive and vulnerable at the same time with an earlier injury that left his shoulder held together by plastic and pins. Philip Reed plays Tommy Lee, and he is by far the most believable of being a real martial artist. Tommy's brother was killed many years ago in the same martial arts tournament. And he's got a gimpy shoulder, you know that. Mr. Jennings, your expertise. My pleasure to announce the names of the five. The team also includes Virgil, the Buddhist, who provides a lot of comic relief in this movie with his quick-witted quips and Sonny Grosso, the Italian who basically just introduces himself as Italian. The tryouts are being held by Frank Cuso, who is played by James Earl Jones, and a team could not have had a better actor play their coach. Ever be late. It shows disrespect to me, which is to win. Yeah. yeah. If some of you are lucky, you might even get laid. <laughs> I can honestly say the ending of this film brought me to tears the other day. It humanizes both its heroes and its villains. All of the characters were so likable in my opinion. It's an excellent movie that shows a lot of hurt and great type Kwando scenes and range within the actors. I'm definitely not into the sequels of this movie. I apologize but this one was far too nostalgic for me. Some movies I just don't agree with remakes. This had box office numbers much lower than Double Impact, but competed with Van Damme's Kickboxer, which had come out prior to this movie by two months. The bar scene is probably a direct ripoff from Kickboxer, but still, that movie by Van Damme also did well in the box office with 50 million on a one and a half million dollar budget. Best of the Best had a five million dollar budget and made 1.7 million. During this saloon brawl, as Ebert called it, he also called it utterly a waste of time and unnecessary, which I thought it was kind of funny and great comedic relief in this sense that we learned a little bit more about the fighting styles and see a lot of wrecked equipment. We also see a sign that says Nashville Club, which tells me that they must be in Tennessee before they decide to fly off to Korea. Sally Kirkland plays Catherine Wade, the assistant trainer. 20 laps around the track! 20? That's five miles. That's right! The team begins training, but it's in no way comparable to the Koreans' rigorous year-round regiment. The Koreans were just taught no mercy. We have a very powerful adversary in the Koreans. <laughs> I feel like No Mercy was something that was never instilled to the fighters of the U.S. national team. The brother of Tommy Lee was killed by Tommy's now opponent, Day Han, the guy who wears the eye patch who is 35 years old, but that doesn't matter. The boys are being taught concentration skills by Dr. Wade. Objective is to break as many as you can, one blow using the hand or head. Ms. Wade will demonstrate. Press. Travis continuously taunts Tommy and uses a lot of racial slurs throughout the film, but ultimately, he's a likable character almost being that it's 1989 and it's Chris Penn. 
Study these briefs carefully. The more you know about your opponent... Tim, 155 pounds, gold medal, 1984, world championship. Wonderful. That's why we're going to make your moves smaller and more focused. Gold medal, 1985, world championship. You win the prize. Day Han. Tommy is disturbed when his opponent is revealed to be Day Han, Team Korea's best fighter who was responsible for killing Tommy's brother in a similar tournament. Kuzo hopes that Tommy's desire for revenge will give him the necessary aggression to win, while Wade is more concerned about Tommy's mental state. With time and training, the team begins to bond and to earn each other's respect. All right, coach. You had a chance to take Travis out and you didn't. You're holding back. That worries me. To win, they will need to be the best technically, physically, and mentally, such as the Koreans. When? Lose his leg. We all have our priorities. What? Are you telling Kuzo cuts Alex from the team when he breaks the rigid training regimen to visit his son who had been hit by a car. Later, Tommy quits after knocking out Virgil with a powerful spinning side kick during practice. It's scenes like this that really show the range of the actors and add a very emotional aspect to this movie. I will beg. Mile per hour, 184 pounds of pressure. Where the hell do you think you're going? We leave with a tournament. Kill my brother in a tournament just like this one. I'm afraid. If you don't do what just for me, it's hard to really say why I like this movie so much. I mean, it's just it really hits hard, and even with the cliche story, I really cried at the end. I can't lie. I was the coach of that team, Miss Wade. I carried Tommy's brother died because I failed. Help you change your mind about Alex. Since when did you give a rat's ass about anybody but you? Me damn. This movie really could have been way bigger in my opinion if not for people like John claude Van Damme and, and Steven Seagal, of course. No apologies offered or accepted. Welcome back. Here we are to the tournament, which is definitely my favorite part. I must say the fight choreography was much better in my opinion in this part of the movie. James Earl Jones was so respectable as a karate coach, it was like, although he was unorthodox, he still gave a great Vince Lombardi type role. He's also guilty for Tommy's brother's death and wants to fix that situation. Unfortunately, the team has dealt a loss extremely early in the tournament. Oh, oh, to the spine oh, and Kerr Kerr is Virgil. down again. Get out. Come on, Virgil. In the first two matches of the tournament, Virgil and Sonny are outclassed by their Korean opponents. Travis does his best to psych up the team with his brash attitude, going point for point with his Korean counterpart, but loses in a tiebreaker, brick-breaking competition. The team is obviously in South Korea. Throughout this movie though, there was amazing sportsmanship displayed and I must say, they did really good. Like both the villains and the heroes in this film are equally likable. Alex, it's up to you and me. You, three year layoff from the tournament circuit, he makes his comeback against Seijin Kwan. Alex ends up dominating his match, but ends up taking a devastating axe kick from his opponent, which injures that shoulder that's already made with plastic and pins for his cartilage. Take it to medical. No! Puppet Tommy. Shit to me, puppet! Forget it, Alex. Oh, oh. God damn it! Tape it up! Tape it up! can continue. Now there's just 30 seconds left on the clock. If he can hold on, he keeps the points. With his left hand, trying to keep one at bay. One attack, Instead of giving up, 
Alex implores Tommy to pop the shoulder back into place and resumes the fight, ultimately defeating his opponent with one arm. Finally, Tommy faces Dehan. After a slow start, Tommy delivers a series of blows that forces Dehan solely on the defensive. Dehan is played by his actual brother. Tommy Lee now in the attack. This spectacular aerial display is the trademark of classic. Even though Eric Roberts, James Earl Jones, and Sally Kirkland received top billing for this film, it's clear that Philip Ree is one of the true stars of the film. The character as Tommy is the most tortured, honestly. As the match nears its end, Tommy has brought the American team within two points of outright victory, and Dehan can barely stand. I believe that Best of the Best is perhaps one of the most underrated martial arts films to come out in the late 1980s and it's definitely different than what they're used to seeing with the gunplay of Steven Seagal and Van Damme as a one man show. The tournament sequences are the highlight of the film as the Ree Brothers and film crew acknowledge the respect of Taekwondo is not only a martial art but as a sport as well. Taekwondo had recently been made an official Olympic sport. You won that match. Don't. In one of my favorite scenes of the movie, at the medal ceremony, Dae Han unexpectedly approaches Tommy and awards him his medal for an honorable act that he committed. Earn victory and honor within. I deeply regret your loss as your brother. Offering himself up as his own brother, like that was definitely a sad part in the movie. It's really not much commentary to do for that scene other than to, to cry, honestly. I recommend this movie highly. And that was 1989's Best of the Best. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you for the next episode.